what was ruined because it became popular. Pretty much any video game has three things happen when it becomes popular. 1. The community becomes obsessive and everyone begins hating it too, the community ends up being full of elitists scaring anyone away. 3. The community magically becomes really nice and welcoming to new players. Just gaming as a whole, I think. I don't think I have ever witnessed number 3. What game has that happened with? I find that games like Dwarf Fortress and Kerbal Space Program have good communities. YouTube I miss the days of non-commercial but now it's full of insane teenagers living in LA with gangs of rapid 12 year old fans. The U has been taken out and now it's essentially slickly produced TV shows masking as homemade videos. Funny you mentioned this. I saw a thread on Twitter today of a bunch of what seemed to be younger people mentioning their first YouTube videos. A lot of them were videos that came out in like 2009 to 2010. It made me think back to my first YouTube videos which were the evolution of dance and two Chinese guys singing Backstreet Boys. YouTube videos were great when it was full of people just doing silly things. It gave us Chocolate Rain and Numa Numa. Fast forward a few years the age of vlogging came about and then people were making weekly or daily videos. I get that it's become a great platform for people to jump start their careers, but I do miss the originality from the beginning of its existence. A pond near my old place. I used to love swimming and having bonfires there as a kid. Then a bunch of people caught wind of it and it became a really popular spot to bring dogs. On a hot day you'd enjoy the lovely sound of barking dogs and shouting people from dawn till after dusk, and I can't even count the times there was some off the leash dog in my yard chasing after my cat. The town eventually had the pond filled because they feared it would contaminate the groundwater in the area which was being used for drinking water. So what was once a picturesque pond is now basically just an ugly dirt, sand field. National Parks Thanks to Instagram, visiting beautiful places is becoming way more popular, but people just have to get a selfie and fall off a cliff or into a geyser where their flesh literally melts. Also they leave garbage and human shit everywhere. Not to mention how trails and paths become eroded and other unintentional damage that people cause. Roadkill, pollution, litter, and like you said idiot things. I guess future fears might be some parks end up developing into built up tourist areas, where they help to conserve in more remote areas or as revenues for private, public use. I'd like to extend that to any outdoor destination that becomes popular. Two really nice cliff jumping spots near my area have fallen victim to horrible dirty people. They closed the second of the two because they started finding bottle caps in the stomachs of baby California condors that live in the area. It's sickening. In a way, mixed martial arts. Of course the level of MMA skills on display at the highest level of the sport by far eclipses what we had a decade, let alone two decades ago. But the period of accomplished athletes coming from various specific backgrounds, such as wrestling, judo, Muay Thai or whatever, starting to cross train was highly intriguing. You never quite knew what to expect from a fight between a world class kickboxer who's rounded out his skill set by mastering takedown defense and one of the best grapplers in the world who just so happens to be an extremely heavy hitter. Retro Video Game Collecting You used to be able to go to thrift stores and flea markets to find deals due to people not knowing what they have. But now it's caught on a lot more and people almost 100% of the time use eBay prices. The fun of hunting is gone and everything is the same price across the board. How much do you think the retro consoles that have come out in the past year or two have affected this? If at all. Not much, really. They have their own little bubble of value and collectability. They seem like they'd be in the same realm as retro games, but they're technically no different than new games or Amiibo since they're being produced and their inventory is still controlled by Nintendo. The only thing it might have done is shine more light on the retro wave in the fact that people are still into playing the games. So that might have increased the value of some retro games, but none so drastically that it's blatantly noticeable.
Apple products. Please don't kill me. I think the look is more important to people now and the company knows it. They make functional, user-friendly products. Now it feels like they are being cheeky and taking advantage of consumerism in the worst way. I agree. I'm a long-time Apple user and the build quality of their products has dropped severely. The entire company is far more geared towards short-term consumerism and selling accessories, than providing a well-designed product that will last a long time. When the Mac Pro stopped being an expansible tower and became this strange quasi-extraterrestrial cylindrical capsule, that was a sign. Minecraft. I enjoy playing this game, but now everyone say that the game is for kids. Hell with what those people say. In terms of long-term playability, it is probably the best game of all time. Plus I'm not afraid to let my kids play it with me. I stopped playing it around 2012 when the skins craze was at its highest. This year one got a PS4 and decided to try it again. I played the demo and ended up buying it full price the same day. Honestly, it's such a great game and I can play it for hours fuck cringe culture. I used to go to an under 18s rock club when I was around 14 15 so around 2002 to 2003. When I first started going, not many went but it was great. You felt like you all knew each other, the security recognized you every week, the DJ recognized you etc and would always play your requests. So every week you'd be hearing different songs and I got into a lot of bands by hearing their songs at the club. Gradually through word of mouth and people bringing friends it get really popular. You'd barely have room to move, there were more idiots and that friendly, exclusive vibe disappeared. The DJ started to play the same popular songs every week to please the bigger crowd. It was still a pretty fun place to go for a teenager but it definitely lost its magic. Any TV show that is or becomes popular usually attracts a large, insane, and rabbit fan base before too long. Doctor Who, brilliant show but rabbit fans arguing constantly. Game of Thrones, rabid conspiracy theorist fans. Sherlock, Breaking Bad, Rick and Morty, I could go on. Doctor Who fans are the worst. Been a fan since 2005 and have done my fair share of fan service with collecting and obsessing but all on my own. Most interactions with fans ended in one-up contests, and then acting superior when opinions differed. I'd almost forgot about the fan base because I just watched the show and enjoy it for what it is without outside opinions, but I was reminded of the fan base a couple of weeks ago in a shop. I was lining up with my mum and I casually asked her and she'd watched the new episode and the 40 something man behind the counter jumped in and started forcing his opinions and talking about how he'd met, stalked half the cast and blah blah blah. I just smiled and nodded and got out of there because I could tell he was trying to play the biggest fan game. This, I've been a Doctor Who fan for a while now and have also done some collecting and go through phases where I watch all the time. But I only ever talk to my brother about it so we have our nice little bubble where we can just enjoy the show together. Listen, I like the show fine enough, but people seem to take it so personally, especially with who your doctor is. I feel so judged when people try to have those conversations with me. Like I have to like 9 the best or have seen every classic episode to be seen as a true fan. For the record, I don't really have a favorite or least favorite. Each actor has a different enough take that it's hard to compare them directly. Because it's a TV show, not real life. And classic who is hard of to follow. Punk slash metal slash hardcore subgenres. I know this one gets brought up every time, and I don't give a shit about a millionaire wearing a minor threat t-shirt, but when records I'm on the hunt for get sold and resold with something like a 7x 10x markup price, you'd best believe we have a problem. Friend oh, I think part of the problem is that 20 years ago there were still record stores with boxes and boxes of random records to root through till you found your holy grail. Now you've got eBay or Amazon, where there's no real equivalent of finding that Moss Icon 7 inches that accidentally got stashed with the Tony Orlando singles in the dollar bin. Fortnite, when it first came out, I thought it was really fun. I mean, it still is pretty fun to play sometimes, 
but the fan base and popularity has made me sick and tired of hearing about it. Kids doing Fortnite dances, adults doing Fortnite dances on videos so they can make money from the kids watching, the countless articles about how Fortnite is ruining children, etc. It's just annoying at this point, but I know that another fun thing will just replace Fortnite, and then that will get ruined by the popularity. It's a never ending cycle. Edit. I remember the days before seeing reposts throughout multiple subreddits every day. There were trolls, but people knew how to take humor. I just got banned from a subreddit I joined from day one it was created, because I used the word gypsy. This is my only social media left. It's starting to feel like Facebook, 